Okay, so um, this video, the purpose of this video is to uh, take you through the uh, supplementary uh, worksheet, the review worksheet uh, in preparation for the Unit 3 test. Uh, the worksheet is going to focus on uh, properties, proof factoring, uh, and solving systems of equations and quadratics uh, algebraically. Uh, remember, for this unit test, you do not have the use of your TI Inspire, at least not the algebra functions. Um, uh, remember also that this review worksheet is not comprehensive, and so make sure that you also complete the textbook assignment along with uh, along with this worksheet in order to be fully prepared for the uh, assessment. Okay, so I'm going to begin uh, by filling in this table, and the object of this table is just to highlight for you uh, the different characteristics or properties that each of our uh, quadrilaterals have, uh, and the ones that they do not have. Remember. Uh, it, almost all of this information is contained uh, on the theorem sheet uh, in the form of a variety of uh, theorems. Okay, so I'm just going to check it off if it has the property, uh, and then certain of these uh, figures uh, uh, have uh, the property, but it's only partly true. And so let's, uh, let's get started. So we've got our figures on top, parallelogram, rhombus, rectangle, square, uh, kite, and isosceles trapezoid. Uh, I'm leaving out the just the plain trapezoid because it's uh, it has relatively few uh, characteristics, and so we're not going to concern ourselves with it too much. Okay. Remember also, uh, just to simplify, of course, that a rhombus, a rectangle, uh, uh, sorry, a, a rhombus, a rectangle, and a square are all parallelograms, and so any property that applies to a parallelogram will automatically apply to the other three figures. But that is not true uh, in reverse. Okay. So let's start off uh, opposite sides parallel. That, of course, is true for a parallelogram by definition, uh, and therefore it must be true for a rhombus, true for a rectangle, and true for a square. In the case of a kite, uh, neither of the opposite pairs are parallel. In fact, it has no parallel sides whatsoever. An isosceles trapezoid, that is only partly correct. Uh, uh, it has exactly one pair of parallel sides. And so the other pair cannot be parallel. Otherwise, of course, the trapezoid is a parallelogram, and this is not allowed. The definition of a trapezoid is exactly one pair of parallel sides. Okay, congruent opposite sides. This is true for parallelograms, and therefore for rhombus, rectangle, and square. Uh, for kites, uh, uh, opposite sides are not congruent, and so it is not true for a kite consecutive sides of a kite are in fact, um, uh, or two pairs of consecutive sides are congruent, not all pairs of uh, consecutive sides. For an isosceles trapezoid, we have opposite sides congruent. Uh, this is partially true. It is true only for the legs. Okay, remember the parallel sides are the bases. Uh, the non-parallel sides are called the legs, and in an isosceles trapezoid, the uh, legs are in fact congruent. Okay, opposite angles congruent. Uh, this is true of a parallelogram, and then uh, it is therefore also true of rhombus rectangle square. It is partly true uh, for a kite. Uh, one of the pairs uh, of the uh, opposite angles are in fact congruent, uh, and the pair that is congruent, so I'm just going to sketch uh, a kite over here. So the pair that is congruent is in fact the pair that is contained uh, between the non-parallel sides. So one pair, uh, that is true for one pair. Uh, in the case of an isosceles trapezoid, uh, we have uh, uh, congruent angles within an isosceles trapezoid, but not opposite angles, and so that's not true uh, at all of an isosceles trapezoid. Okay, consecutive angles supplementary, and so Consecutive angles, just like consecutive vertices, uh, if I have parallelogram ABCD, then AB is consecutive or in order. And so, of course, with a parallelogram, um, uh, we've got two pairs of opposite sides parallel, which means we've got uh, consecutive interior angles that are supplementary because we have a series of U's uh, from the fun rule. And so that is, in fact, true for a parallelogram, and therefore, once again, true for the other three uh, special parallelograms, the rhombus, the rectangle, and the square. Uh, in the case of the kite, uh, this of course cannot be true at all because a kite has no pairs of parallel sides, and if consecutive angles are supplementary, that guarantees 
uh, uh, that we have got uh, parallel sides and therefore it will be partly true in an isosceles um, uh, trapezoid um, but only applies of course to um, two of the pairs not all of them so uh, angles one and two would be uh, consecutive uh, angles which are supplementary angles three and four uh, so angles one and two angles three and four but not one and three and not two and four okay moving on uh, congruent diagonals this is not a characteristic of a parallelogram it has diagonals which bisect each other so I'm going to check that off and of course that allows me to check off uh, for rhombus rectangle and square Congruent diagonals is in fact a characteristic that belongs uh, to a rectangle uh, and naturally uh, it also therefore belongs to a square since a square is a combination of a rhombus and a rectangle. Um, congruent diagonals is also a characteristic of an isosceles trapezoid. They do not bisect but they are congruent in length. Uh, Diagonals which are perpendicular, of course, uh, cut at 90 degrees. Uh, the uh, diagonals, um, sorry, the figure that has diagonals which are perpendicular is, of course, a rhombus, uh, and therefore this also applies to a square. Uh, likewise, uh, it does apply to one of our non parallelogram figures. In this particular case, it applies to a kite. Uh, the diagonals of a kite uh, do not bisect, but they do intersect at 90 degrees and that is of course not true for an isosceles trapezoid. Diagonals bisecting each other as well um, of course that cannot be true for either an isosceles trapezoid uh, or for a kite otherwise uh, they would in fact be parallelograms and they cannot be but it is um, uh, diagonals bisecting each other is uh, um, uh, partially true uh, in the case of a kite and so again uh, one of the diagonals uh, will be bisected by the other, but they don't both bisect each other. So once again, I'm just going to draw a sketch in here. So the diagonal that joins the uh, congruent pair of angles is in fact bisected. The other diagonal is not. So partly true in the case of a cut. Okay, uh, isosceles trapezoid, like I mentioned, uh, not true at all. Uh, the diagonals bisect, uh, oh sorry, uh, I did want to mention, oh sorry, I did mention that. So diagonals uh, bisecting uh, vertex angles, um, uh, that is going to be true for a rhombus and therefore uh, it is true also for a square. And so true for a rhombus and therefore also true for a square. Once again, uh, in the case of a kite, uh, that is partially true uh, and so uh, the diagram that I've drawn uh, in the box above, it's going to be partially true for a cut. The uh, angles that in fact are bisected in a cut are the uh, uh, non-congruent pair of angles in a cut. So that is true for one pair of angles in a cut. Uh, and lastly, uh, sides which are perpendicular, in other words, uh, 90 degree angles at the vertices, that is of course uh, true for a rectangle and true for a square uh, but not necessarily true for any of the other figures okay so that's a summary of all of the different properties uh, like i said before most of these are contained within the theorems um, uh, and uh, if they're not contained within the theorems then uh, they are part of the definition of the figure and so make sure you do learn the definitions of each of these six figures because the definitions are not included on the theorem sheet. Okay, what I'm going to do now is move on to uh, a quick uh, review of factoring because of course you're going to have to solve uh, uh, quadratic equations of this type um, on the quiz and on the, well, you've done the quiz on the test and that uh, is going to be uh, done without the uh, TI Inspire. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do at this point, uh, I've highlighted here, you can solve by factoring or you can use the quadratic formula. And so I'll do one of each um, and I'll show you a couple of different factoring methods. Uh, I'm going to show the box method because many of you are familiar with that. 
uh, and I'll just show you another variation of that as well. Okay, so let's begin. Um, what I'm going to do is begin using uh, by using the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula will not be given, and so if you want to use the quadratic formula, you're going to need to uh, memorize x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, and of course the a, b, and c represent the uh, coefficients of the x squared term, the x term, and the constant respectively. Okay, so in this particular case, a would be equal to 1, b would be equal to minus 5, and c would be equal to minus 14, and now we're going to plug that into our formula uh, and simplify. So we're going to have x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of uh, b squared minus 4 times a times c. And that entire expression is divided by 2 times a. And so what we're going to do now is just uh, do a little bit of simplifying. Uh, the denominator is, of course, 2 times 1, which is going to be 2. Uh, minus 5 squared is going to give us 25. 4 times 14 is going to give us 56, and a minus and a minus becomes a plus. Okay, uh, 25 and 56 is, of course, going to add to give us 81, and the square root of 81 is going to give us 9. So minus and a minus becomes a plus. We have 5. Oh, let me just clean that up. 5 plus or minus the square root of 81, which is plus or minus 9. That's going to give us 5 plus 9 is 14 over 2, or 5 minus 9, which is minus 4 over 2. And of course, that simplifies to 7 or minus 2. And that would be our final answer using the quadratic formula. Okay, what I'm going to do is factor the second uh, question. And this time, what I'll do is I'll use the box method. Uh, and uh, the first step in any quadratic equation, whether you're factoring using the quadratic formula or using the box method, is going to be to move all terms to one side. So x squared, move the 6x to the left-hand side. That's going to give me minus 7x. Move plus, uh, sorry, minus 12 to the left-hand side, which is going to give me plus 12, and that's going to be equal to 0. Okay, so uh, using the box method, uh, what we're going to do is draw our box, start by putting in x squared into the first uh, top left-hand corner, plus 12 into the bottom left-hand corner, uh, sorry, bottom right-hand corner. I'm going to look at the coefficient of this term, which is 1, and this term, which is 12, and I'm going to multiply those two. That's going to give me plus 12. I'm then going to look at the factors of 12. So in order to get 12, 12 times 1, 6 times 2, 3 times 4. What I'm interested in is the, the pair of factors uh, that can be added or subtracted in order to give me minus 7x. Uh, hopefully you can see that it's the 3 and the 4. And in order for me to get minus 7x, I'm going to need minus 3x and I'm going to need minus 4x. And it doesn't matter which box we're going to put these in. Uh, some variations in the method at this point, um, but essentially what you need to do is look across this column, uh, sorry, this row over here, uh, x squared minus 3x, take out the common factor, which in this particular case is x. Uh, we want to do the same, <clears throat> excuse me, for the bottom, so minus 4x plus 12, I'm going to take out the common factor, which is going to be uh, 4, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, Sorry, we're going to take out uh, minus 4. Um, uh, we're going to take out uh, the common factor between x squared uh, and minus 4x, which is going to be x. Take out the common factor between minus 3x and 12. Uh, and again, uh, uh, some of you would have learned that if the term is touching the minus, then we that's how we know to factor out the minus. So minus 3x plus 12, and I'm going to factor out minus 3. And so our final solution, x minus 3, times x minus 4 equals 0, resulting in solutions of 3 or 4.